welcome to this review of the 1957 classic Paths of Glory. As always, I'm your host, Captain Jack Hammer, and I thank you for joining me. The bitter, numbing mindlessness of war and the exploitation of the military ranks has been material for a number of films, both good and bad. If there was ever a film that made it brazenly obvious, tangible for everyone, it has to be the late Stanley Kubrick's compelling film, Paths of Glory. It's a movie that exposes excessive hatch plots within the military ranks during stress situations, where cowardly men try to save their own hides without respect or second thought about others. The cowards in the film are, of course, the highest-ranking staffs of the French army, who would rather send thousands of their own foot soldiers into certain death than admitting their own fears. Fears that would only be too human. It seems to take a certain personality to climb the ranks, and courage oftentimes is not one of those supporting virtues. After all, isn't that what the common foot soldier is there for? Director Stanley Kubrick casts a harsh glance at this scenario, indicting the military politics. The result is a memorable film that leaves the viewer doing something you rarely see nowadays. Thinking. And after more than 50 years, it is just as important a lesson in humanity and social incompetence as it was back then. Stanley Kubrick explores the whole spectrum of misguided personalities during times of war in this brilliant film. It all starts when the French general staff decides from the safety of their own little chateau far off from enemy lines that it's time to attack the ant hill. It is a hilltop held by the German army during World War I, without any strategic value at all, but for the sole purpose of claiming it for their own, and the officers are determined to see it taken by their men. The order is passed down directly to the soldiers in the trenches, right in front of Ant Hill. These men are led by the energetic and charismatic Colonel Dax, played by one of the last surviving members of the golden age of cinema, Kirk Douglas. The men in those trenches are battered, worn, weak, and long overdue for some well-deserved rest after countless successful advancements into enemy territory. Despite Dax's concerns over the men's morale and fighting power, the order is enforced, and the coming morning, these men try to fight their way up the ant hill. The attack is a complete failure and results in the pointless loss of many men. The attack is a suicide mission in the first place, but it turns completely fatal in part due to one commanding officer's refusal to order his men to leave the trenches, leaving the first line of soldiers without backup. Frantic over the incident, the supervising general even orders his artillery to fire on his own men in the trenches. The order is refused, and the aggravated general has only one thing on his mind, to cover his own ass. And to do so, he seeks revenge for the failure by charging the men for mutiny and cowardice in the face of the enemy, while he was comfortably sipping his drink from a safe distance. Dax does all he can to rescue the three men who are about to be executed just to satisfy the general's bloodthirst. What follows is a travesty to any legal system and defies any respect for human life. With Kirk Douglas leading the way, Paz the Glory is truly one of the most memorable anti-war films I've ever seen. It is his sanity, his warmth, and determination that helps make the unbearable injustices we witness so despicable. In him, we see all the virtues of a true hero, without glorifying the character in any way. We see the virtues you would think are concentrated within the army's generals, but those virtues are lost on those men. All we find are corrupt, self-centered marionettes strung up to play the game of decadence and opportunism at the most inappropriate of all times. In a rather short but gripping attack sequence, Kubrick manages to show us the carnage and horror of war in a series of impressive images that set the stage for the events to come. How can anyone who is not standing side by side on the front lines with these men have the arrogance to accuse them of cowardice. The question is literally screaming at the viewer as the story unfolds. All we can do throughout the movie is hope that somehow sanity prevails. 
As I said before, Kirk Douglas is one of the last surviving members of the golden age of cinema. He is one of the great American actors of his or any time. And there's nothing more you can really say about this great thespian without becoming redundant. His body of work speaks for itself. Paths of Glory gets a 10 out of 10. And everyone who joins the military should be made to watch and study it. And use it as a touchstone in their military service. Oh, and just a little side note. Look for Richard Anderson in this movie. He's the actor that played Oscar Goldman in the 70s TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Jack Hammer, and I will see you next time.